Hey everybody, it's time once again on this Sunday evening for another edition of JizzTalkin.com. And this week we have the one and only, we thought we would just start 2021 out with a bang, and that we did. And we have the one and only Hyapatia Lee with us. And Hyapatia, it's great to have you here. How are we doing? Oh, thank you, sweetie. It's so nice to be here. I really appreciate you thinking of me. Thank you, sweetheart, Aaron. Thank you. It's so cool to see all my friends. This is awesome. <laughs> I love talking to Eric and my dear friend, Richard. Oh, I've missed you all. This is so cool. Wade, how you doing? This is and, really nice. And hey. not, only, not only do we have that, we've got uh, Tara in Canada and Joey's from down under a Joey's on another sick day today. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope you're not really feeling sick. He's see. not. He just calls into work sick because he wants Good to be And Good. then uh, I'm just letting in uh, uh, Jose Duval. He's going to be with us as well, too. So we've got a, a great uh, bunch of folks here. Uh, Eric Monti is here with us as well. And, and so we're having a great time. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, first things first. We have some sad news this week. I want to uh, share a picture of a person we lost this week on Wednesday. And this was the one and only uh, Carter Stevens, a film pioneer and what I would say would be self-described dinosaur, as he always called himself. And, and we became friends and, and I did a, a lot of computer work for him back in the day. And uh, he left a couple of nice reviews on my, on my website. And, and he was an all around nice guy to me and an all around nice guy to a lot of folks. And, and I know he's got a, his sons are kind of struggling right now with some bills. They've got a GoFundMe page. I'll link that in the description as well, too. So maybe some folks can help out with that when we get time. But anyway, um, hats off to the memory of uh, Carter Stevens uh, here tonight as well. So with that, let's get right into it. Hey, I want to just bring in Richard Pacheco to start things out because uh, he's always full of little trivia items and I like his shirt. <laughs> a Yankee fan, huh? Yeah. Well, I was cold. This is a gift to me from Whoopi's mother. So um, I wear it because uh, I'm cold. <laughs> I like the pirates, though. And I love Hyapatia. And I'm oh, so, I love you, hon. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you again. It's been so long and uh, such wonderful memories. And it was one of the highlights of my career to get, oh, mine to, as well. get to work with you and know you. Um, one of the things that we as performers were fortunate enough to share is that it's rare in life, especially if you're married and you have family and you're, you live a life, to get a job where you get to get close with some other human being. And um, it's allowed. Uh, and you can, <laughs> you can just, you, wow, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And uh, I felt that uh, some of those turned out horrible, but you didn't. <laughs> and uh, we had, it's just such a gift that I, I got to have that time with you. So thank you. Oh, sweetheart. Thank you. You were such a joy and a pleasure to work with. I think one of the main things that stands out about my time with you was how respectful and professional you were. You know, you weren't one of these fly by night kids that, you know, was on drugs and just doing it for, you know, whatever. You are serious. You're an actor. You are professional. And I respected that so much about you. And then not only that, but the fact that you also, like I, had a life. You know, you had your wife. I had my husband. I had my kids. You, you had your life. And I thought it was really cool that we could connect on such a unique level, you know, yeah. Not only as artists making a movie, yeah. but also as two people communicating physically. Yeah. It's one of those ones where you want to say to the producer, uh, um, you can have your money back. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your heart. You're so sweet. God love you. That's really cool. Thank you, darling. <laughs> All right. Well, appreciate that. And thanks for coming by, Richard. It's always great to have you stop in and share a story or two and and also a guest that was a couple of weeks ago uh now is uh, uh kathy brown kathy how are you doing tonight i'm doing well i'm doing well it's really great to be here and to see hypatia um i've written a few pieces for you i wrote centerfold um i love I, that movie that was I so well too. written Bless thank you your heart. 
And I got to well, tell you, I'm sorry, but Richard, it is so good to see you again. It's been forever. And I just am so glad to see you. But Catherine, that was really well done. You're quite a talented uh, uh, writer there. That's, Thank you. I love well, that. It was tailor written for you. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and if uh, people don't remember, it was about a woman who was a photographer, unbelievably beautiful, and she becomes a centerfold herself. And that was played by Hyapatia. And I also wrote, I do three, and I wrote part of Slow Dance with uh, Gloria Leonard and uh, Raven Touchstone. So we all kind of collaborated. And it was just wow. always so nice to write for you because you could act, you could do the sex, you, you just, you loved what you were doing and it was just so wonderful. Now, you don't have to say it was one of my movies, but if, could you name a few of your favorite roles? few of your favorite films. oh gosh well i have to say the rivaled tales of canterbury because it's a takeoff of chaucer's canterbury tales so it was a period piece and we got to you know go to um, universal studios and rent costumes from them and uh, the budget was close to half a million dollars uh, we shot for wow. nine days so and it was on 35 millimeter panavision mm -hmm. So, I mean, we rented horses and shot in Northern California. And, I mean, that was a real movie. So I, I really enjoyed the production value on that, of course. Um, I thought The Masseuse was a really good movie because it explored people's personalities and their motives and who they really were rather than just your hi I'm the pizza man I don't have change let's do it you know right I think Neil I, I, Wexler I, I, wrote that and you were nominated for that too and he yeah. was I think he won for uh, best screenplay yeah I think that movie got four awards if I remember correctly but I've slept since then so I might not <clears throat> <laughs> But you were always associated with, with good movies, good scripts. And I really appreciated that because it was so frustrating to get a script that had no substance in it and nothing to act. And the character was just unbelievable. There was no substance to it. There was no believability. And yours were always something that I could really sink my teeth in and do a little Stanislavski method acting with and do the research. And then, you know, I love doing that because I come from a theater background. So that's why I got into adult films, was to act and make movies. And I loved it. You gave me something fun to do, something to work with. Great. And you made the writing so easy. And so when I knew it was a piece for you, it, it was just, you know, you just, I knew that you would give it your all. And you would just always, also the way you moved was so graceful and beautiful. Oh, I know you're a dancer too, but you know, it's just a pleasure being a woman and a dark haired woman. Well, now my hair is white, but uh, well, my hair somebody... is too. At least it's getting there. If it weren't for the hair dye, you know, <laughs> but just somebody who looked different, you know, who wasn't one of Thank these, you. you know, cookie cutter blondes. It just was really nice to see you up on screen. Thank you, sweetie. I appreciate that very much. Well, Kathy, thanks for stopping by, and, and we'll we'll start maybe circle wagons back to you a little bit later. Okay. Great, great. Jose Duval is with us. Jose is going to be our guest in a couple of weeks here, and, and we can't wait to, to hear what he has to say, but uh, it's nice to see you here today. Yes, um, I'm glad to be here to see you, but I follow you on um, uh, YouTube, your interviews and things like that. I love it. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And you did a good job defending the undefendable Ron journey. <laughs> well, he and I have been friends since I got into the business, you know, way back in the early to mid 80s. And, yeah. you know, I, I wasn't in contact with him on a regular basis. But we did do that Ponderosa Sun Club once a year in Roseland, Indiana. And mm -hmm. I saw him change over time. Yes. Well, of course, we all change over time. Yeah. I work with him a few times. Actually, one uh, thing, I was his father. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I think it was brown, brown sugar or something like that, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I worked for, for him one time, too. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, well, thanks a lot, Josie. We'll see Josie coming up a little bit later on uh, this year in the new year. And so that's uh, something we'll be looking forward to. Yeah, you did. Uh, uh, you do. Uh, you do have a, a YouTube channel. Let's cover that right away because we're gonna uh, put that in the link and then also on the website as well too. What's it called and what's it about? 
Thank you. It's called Hyopatially Native Strength. And native strength <clears throat> isn't just about Native American strength. It's about the strength that's inside of you. It's about self-help mental health from the Native American perspective. Um, because I made those movies, I was able to travel on the road doing personal appearances in all these gentlemen's clubs. And I booked myself in clubs that were near reservations. So I went to the reservations, I met the elders, I met several medicine men and women, <clears throat> excuse me, and I studied with them. <clears throat> so I learned a lot of the ancient ways. And one of the things that I was most interested in was mental health, you know, depression, uh, anxiety, grief, stress, all those things. And I found out that there is a huge, rich culture that has so many tools to help us on our path to happiness, health, harmony, humor, and hope. Those are the five heokas. Um, that it puts the mental health community that we have today to shame. They have nothing other than drugs and talk therapy. But when I found all these wheels and keys and tools, I mean, it took me a while to get myself in order because like anybody, I have a lot of dirt under the rug, but you know, I've been through a lot of trauma in the past, but it took me a while and I figured it out and I did all the work and oh my gosh, it works. So I was elected blessed woman for the Lost River Band of the Cherokees in Mitchell, Indiana. This was back in 2000. And as the blessed woman, I'm a pipe carrier. So I like did sweat lodges and pipe ceremonies and healing ceremonies and stuff. But one of the things I really taught the people and wanted to teach the people was these wheels and keys, the self-help mental health, you know, and because it worked so well for me, I said, I wonder if this will work for other people. And it did. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. And I sat on it for years. <laughs> I just sat. And then about oh, five or six, maybe seven years ago now, I wrote <laughs> the first Native Strength book. And I've written five books on it. And then it dawned on me that nobody reads books anymore. And that because I had this wonderful background in making movies, and I had learned so much on the set about lighting and cinematography and camera angles and all this editing, I could put all this to use and make a television show on what I'd learned. So that show is called Native Strength. And we just finished, I just finished my last episode of the third season. I'm working on the first episode of the fourth season. The show airs on Amazon, Roku, and close to 50 stations across the country now. Oh, excellent. And of course the YouTube and, channel. And I love, I love your, your background you have for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so. Hey, I, mean, uh, I also have other things on the channel as well. As Jose pointed out, I have my random rambles um, where I just talk about random subjects and I ramble on like about uh, uh, Ron Jeremy, um, how I got into the business, how I got out of the business, uh, my opinions on various topics, pet peeves, things like that. Then I also do music videos because I learned to edit and I love to edit. And I have music. I mean, I did... My first album <clears throat> was half comedy and half country. And that was, oh gosh, way back in the mid eighties with SRO records. And then I started writing music and I did my second album in like 1990. And so now I've got my own home studio. I can do my own stuff here, but I also do the music videos and not only for myself, but for other people like Robert Fleischman who wrote Wheel in the Sky for Journey. Um, I was very honored <laughs> to get that gig. <laughs> um, you know, he's such a famous man. It was wonderful to be able to do that. I also have indigenous facts of the day where I tell you things that uh, you might not know about, like what is manifest destiny? Who started scalping? Where did that come from? Um, I also do, um, I just recently started a new playlist where I read from some rare books that I have found on the reservations. <clears throat> particularly about Native Americans and star people, that's what we call them, or UFOs, aliens. And I read from the books because these are best said in the words of the original experiencer. You know, I couldn't paraphrase and do it justice. So I'm, I just started that. 
And this next week, I'm going to be starting a guided meditation um, in Native American style for relaxation and getting in touch with your inner elders and things like that. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff to check out on the channel. I appreciate that. Hey, let's go to our next uh, next gentleman here. And, and uh, Gabe is originally from my town. So I got to throw the thing out to my homeboy, Gabe. How you doing, Gabe? Good. How are you guys? Good. Nice to see I, you here. Yeah. Uh, I was a fan when I was, you know, a teenager and stuff like that. So I figured I'd check in and, and uh, give it a good watch. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. You bet. Question, Gabe? No problem. I follow you on Twitter, so. Awesome. Excellent. Okay, Thank great. You. Thanks for you following bet. me. You I bet. love Twitter. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's really it, it, cool it, to be in touch with everybody. I love that. You bet. Hey, let's uh, let's swing things over to uh, uh, one of our good friends who's here most every week, Eric Monty. And Eric is a uh, a 17-year veteran of the professional uh, adult film brigade and the back in the day. Anyway, Eric, how are you doing today? I'm fine, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Nice seeing you. Nice to see you, Eric. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I was. I broke in in 83. John, Ronnie got me in as well as an actor. He Sounds said, like yeah. you and I started at the same time. My first yeah. movie was in 83 as well. Uh, and I saw you a couple of times at the consumer shows in Vegas, and I, you know, I was always very attracted to you. You're one of my three young ladies that I always wanted to work with and I never well, had the good fortune. But, <laughs> now, I think it's fascinating that you've touched base with your, um, you know, your the Native American background. I think it's very interesting. I've yeah. always had a desire to get involved and to learn more about my Native American background. Native American religion was against the law until 1978 mm -hmm. when the Indian Religious Freedom Act was passed by Congress. That's the year I graduated from high school. Um, until then, powwows, pipe ceremonies, sweat lodges, all of that was illegal. I used to teach, I was a teacher, high patient, in high school, believe it or not, you right. <laughs> a heck of a segue, but I remember teaching that to my kids in junior high. You know. Good for you, good for you, because that's one of the things that I wish that my teachers had taught me. You know, mm -hmm. I was taught, you know, uh, merciless in Indian savages in the Declaration of Independence. And that got me sent to the principal's office because I stood up and pitched a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and one last thing, I, I also like the, the, the rival tales. Of, I like period pieces a lot. I like the old, I was an actor as well, acting background. And it was Thank really you. a nice you know, 35 millimeter film and with a good spine and, and it was terrific, you know, costuming and things like that. Oh, so it's nice to meet you. And like I said, I, I, you really look, you, you look marvelous. You really want to look wonderful. Thank God. You know. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you, dear. All right. Thanks. I really Eric. appreciate that. Um, John's got his hand up, so we better call on John. We'll unmute him here, and then we'll get his hand put down. And John, it's nice to have you back. We missed you for a couple weeks, but anyways, glad to have you uh, back here on the show. John, uh, we'll unmute you here. There you go. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm very good. Happy New Year to you, Hypatia, and to the rest of everybody. Thank um, you. I was a big fan, like like everybody was saying, when I was a younger person, and I loved the masseuse. Um, but I when a, I always remembered you in one of the hottest scenes that I still, I think to this day, remember was a really great scene with you and Barbara Dare. Uh, and unfortunately, I forget the name of the film. The Wild Wild West. Yeah. And it's just, <laughs> it was just, to this day, I remember that one. Just a, a classic scene to me. Barbara was very sweet. It was fun to work with her. And I have, I've also caught some of your YouTube videos and um, I'm, be, I'm going to subscribe to it now so I can catch up to all the rest of them. But um as an old fan, though, I just, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to head off to work in a little bit, but I had to stop by, uh, give you greetings, and um, just thank you for the work. Well, thank you so much, dear. I really appreciate that, and I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Of thank course, you. the continued success to you. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you, John, for stopping by. Now, get to work. Now, somebody who should be at work, but he's on another sick day is uh, Joey. <laughs> And his boss is going to just fire him someday because he's going <laughs> to stumble upon this website and 
then it's just all going to go to hell in a handbasket. But Joey's from Australia. Joey, how are we doing today? Good morning, Patrick. How are you doing today? Excellent. That's good. How are you guys going there with the COVID and, st and stuff over there? Is it pretty strict over there? Some places. It depends on the state you're in and who's the governor, in my humble opinion. I'm in Colorado. <laughs> So our, we have a Democratic governor, and he's a little bit more proactive. We have state-mandated masks in public areas, mm -hmm. which with my compromised immune system and my health condition, I am adamant about paying attention to. We got <laughs> the new strain here in Colorado that they had over in the UK. So mm -hmm. that's a little scary. Um, yeah, no, we, um, we were doing so well before Christmas for about... Um, six weeks with no cases we're doing so extremely well and um, until uh, just before Christmas the cases went up and it's ga it's the, the, it's gaining higher and higher and starting last night midnight everyone must be wearing masks and we're not allowed to travel we got to stay indoors so our Christmas and New Year's were kind of shot down in flames so to speak so it was pretty it was pretty bad so and we have the school holidays come up down here in australia so kids must stay indoors they can't go out i've got my son here at home now so and it's just um yeah it's it's a bit of a down, downfall but we got to do what we got to do to stay safe unfortunately so but um but it's good to see you again thank you for your time okay. and, um, you know, my heart goes out to you with children at home um my sons are old they have their own kids now so <laughs> my heart goes out to them i homeschooled yeah. my kids up until uh, my oldest was in eighth grade and then i kind of gave up um and, and it's a good thing because he he's so smart he's got a phd in physics he went way over my head um but i don't know how you do it with your kids at home my heart goes out to you and i uh, by the way i gotta say i love australia i was down there in 19 um 89 and Ooh, I, was, I was still in high school. <laughs> your heart. Yeah, and in New Zealand, they're doing pretty good with the COVID too. Of course, they've just recently had their cases uh, mm, uh, yeah. a little bit too as well. But now we, we, we just got to be more responsible and all that. But like you said, sometimes our, our politicians and our health ministers, when you do hear both cases and what the situation is, they're both different stories and it's confusing a lot of people. They only like stay indoors, only go to purchase groceries if needed or see medical attention if you feel sick. But then again, sometime during the week, we have a sporting event. Oh, go to a sport event and watch a game of football or cricket. And it's like, no, that's a large gathering of people. You shouldn't be doing that. So it's very controversial and it's confusing a lot of people. So, um, yeah, I think we have to use our brains, you know, think logically so we can live yes. long and prosper, you know, because if we, if you paid any attention in school at all in science class, you know, anything, mm. uh, all bacteria and transmissions of germs and stuff like that, like you said, that just doesn't make any sense. So a lot of people just, you know, they just don't have the discipline, I think, to do what's mm. right, unfortunately. Well, I don't think it's just not only discipline, but like I said, it's common sense and have big consideration for other people. And that's where it comes down to. And yeah. like most people do obey it, but some people are, well, it's okay. I'm young. I'm not going to get sick as a year, but you don't know what's going to happen towards the other person going to affect. So. That's right. Thank you. See, I have panhypopituitarism, and that's a big word which has lots of problems. It means my pituitary gland is dead. So I don't make any of the necessary life-sustaining hormones, but <laughs> growth hormone, which makes your immune system work. So I have no immune system. So when oh. I go to the grocery store and I've got my mask on, I even wear gloves, and I see somebody with their nose hanging out, like you got your dick hanging out or something, or their nose <laughs> pulled down over their face, I, I run to the other side of the store like they, they're a leper, for one thing, and it used to be I'd say something under my breath. Anymore, I'm more demonstrative. I'll say, you jackass, you idiot, you're yeah. a moron. You know? right, right, yeah. yeah. 
Because Understand. like you said, it's just consideration. You might not die. You might not have long-term complications, although a lot of people do, even the young mm. ones. But you're taking my life in your hands and That's other true. people's life. And I resent that immensely. Because <laughs> I've worked Mercy. my ass off to try to stay alive. If you've seen my YouTube channel and my videos yes. about panhypopituitarism and living with panhypopituitarism, you so, know I am working my ass off to stay alive. Yes. I take a minimum of two injections a day and Jeez. multiple drugs uh, from inhalers and nebulizer treatments and, and, and medications out the yin-yang. It's ridiculous. The price of it my is. medical care is insane. And I'm going through all of these hoops just to stay alive. And it's too difficult for somebody to wear a mask. Yeah, well, common sense, isn't it? But yes, um, in, in going about that, I do apologize for taking your time because I know there's other people I want to talk to. But I'll make it short and sweet for you. Um, I've known your past and we've done an industry, but my biggest question for you is like your music. Because I've seen some footage of you and your music and all that. It's like, wow, yeah, you've got to, well, okay, Katie, because I've got a soft spot for music as well. Um, what got you intrigued into that role? Like, if you had the choice back then um, between the industry and that, would you continue your path of music and work on the industry later? Or, you know what, I'll do that, then I'll continue on my, on my music. What was your biggest influence in proceeding in that music? Oh, bless you. <laughs> First of all, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart for asking that question and for being interested in my music. I have always loved music. <clears throat> I've been a dancer since and I did my first, first solo dance at the age of four. I started learning violin at the age of nine. I would have learned oh, sooner, but it wasn't available to me. I really wanted to pick up keyboards. I wanted to play piano, but <laughs> that was too big of an instrument for my mom, <laughs> grandma, to raise me. Pick something smaller. So I picked the violin. I was interested in classical music all of my life. Um, that was what I was exposed to. My grandmother raised me. Her and her sister always listened to classical music. I was trained vocally in opera. We used to go to operas in Cincinnati every year um, during the summer. So I always loved music. And I, mean, I loved theater. <clears throat> I did 72 different plays and mostly musicals. By the time I graduated from high school, I graduated from high school a year early and I wanted to be in theater and basically musical theater. That was it. That's what I wanted to do. And so I went to New York and I met with an agent and I had this wonderful portfolio with all these <clears throat> reviews from the newspapers from the city that I grew up in in Indianapolis, <clears throat> rave reviews. And he said, you know, you, you, I can tell you've got talent. I can tell you're going to go far, but you got to be friendly. I said, yeah, I'm friendly. Okay. He goes, no, I mean, I'm going to throw a party and we're going to have all these producers and directors there and you're going to have to be very physically friendly with each and every one. Oh. And I went, um, okay. Mm. And I talked to my friend, a girlfriend that I was staying mm. with afterwards. She said, I know you're only 18. Do you know what that means? And I said, I <laughs> think I do, but I don't know if I want to. And she goes, yeah, you don't want to. I'll tell you that right now. It means you're going to have sex yeah. with And that's for an audition. That's not for a role. You don't get oh, a chance of a role. Yeah. So that's when I said, you, and put on the brakes and started looking into adult entertainment. And I thought, now in that business, because I was dancing in a club. I was dancing in a nude club. Well, it wasn't nude. It was pasties and g-string actually wasn't even g-string it was full bottoms in indianapolis indiana is a very conservative state oh yeah and um they kept having these actresses in the business come in as featured entertainers for the week and then i found out how much money they were making in salary alone and i thought my gosh i, I mean vanessa del rio was making six grand for four Jeez. shows a day. Yeah, six days a week, four shows a day. Come in, do a show, leave. Come in, do a show, leave. Well, with my health problem, that was perfect. Come in, do a show, leave. Take my medicine, relax, whatever I need to do. That was perfect. And then when I found out how much money they made, I'm like, how can I make a movie? 
Well, <laughs> the people that I was working for, um, the Ponderosa Sun Club in Roselawn, Indiana, was just two and a half hours away. And the club owner said, I will hire a bus driver to take anybody who wants to go there. If you win, place, or show in the contest, it's an automatic race. Oh. So I said, okay, I'm going. So on we went up there and it just so happened I won it. I told my grandmother, she said, I suppose you want me to be happy? She was not. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, because I got a raise. And some people at the contest, there were all these magazine photographers there. So I ended up in a lot of magazines. And somebody from Caribbean Films was there. And they asked me if I'd like to make movies. And I thought about it. I talked to my boyfriend who we were engaged at the time and mm -hmm. later became my husband, Bud Lee. And yes. we decided, yeah, that, that sounds like not a bad idea. So I flew out to California, did a couple movies and started dancing on the road and making extraordinary money. It was marvelous while it lasted. I was gonna say, while well, it lasted, it was marvelous back then, yes. Yes. But no, thank you so much. for. Oh, so I always want to know how, how intrigued you so much in music. Uh, and of course, um, I know it's not, not a great time to say this, but hope you have a happy new year and hopefully more positive than negative comes out of this year as well. And oh, thank you, Patrick, and everyone for your time. I'm sorry if I took so long. I do apologize. I don't mean to. Yeah. As I think oh, Joey, well. I love you. Thank I, you so much. Thank you for all your wonderful questions. It's been thanks, a pleasure talking to you. Hey, let's go out to our old buddy, Herschel Savage. Herschel, how are you doing today? Hi, hi, Patricia. Oh, it's so good to see you, darling. How My have God, you been? You, you look amazing. What, what oh, the hell? so do you. No, I don't. <laughs> you, look, you look great. <coughs> oh, always, always so beautiful. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, it's great to see you. I don't usually come on these shows, but I heard uh, Richie Pacheco was here and you were here. And I said, you know what? Let's show actual proof that we're all still alive. It's great. Amen to that. <laughs> A round of applause for that one. Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. How you how you doing? I heard a lot of your story with your pituitary glands. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was I was recently diagnosed diabetic, so now I'm injecting myself. It's really great. <laughs> well, you've got diabetes mellitus. I've got diabetes insipidus. Okay. So that basically means you've got sugar diabetes and I don't make anti-diuretic hormone. <laughs> okay. So if I don't right. take my medicine, I'm in the bathroom like every 15 minutes. <laughs> well, sounds, like totally me. It sounds like me when I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just doing my best to not get COVID-19 before I get a vaccination, you know? I hear you, my friend. Unbelievable. What, yeah. a, what a nightmare uh, created in this country for no fucking reason. Amen to that. Or as yeah. we natives say, I hope. Yeah. I hope is yeah. native. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Some people, when I say on Twitter, a hoe, they think I'm calling them a hoe. No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you were, American that would be a compliment. Man. What's that, darling? That would be a compliment if you called someone a hoe. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you living now? I'm in Colorado. Okay. I've never been to Colorado. I hear it's beautiful. Oh, it is lovely. The wildlife is fabulous. I have deer that come right up to my backyard. I open really? my window and I take pictures. I take video of them. I have a couple of apple trees back there. So they love it. Wow. How nice. It's amazing. Yeah. What, what part of Colorado? The southern part. The what part? Southern part. Southern. Okay, so yeah, Miami, in, Miami Beach. <laughs> there you go. I'm in the desert southwest. Okay, that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. All right, well, Herschel, thanks for stopping by. It's really great to have you on. What, are you kicking me off now? What? No, no. Okay. Hi, Patrick. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Is he there? Yeah, he's here. I guess he left. I went, he's oh, there. I he's there. He's muted. I see him. I, I got to mute people or else they can become there he early. Is. Oh, I, oh, I got I to get the screen. You, you got to give Patrick extra money to get to talk on this show. <laughs> you know what? I've given him enough goddamn money. The hell with him. <laughs> and he force fed me Iowa corn for nine days. I mean, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> How you doing, Howie? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. The only thing I look forward to right now is the football playoffs. It's unbelievable. Well, I know. I'm probably yeah. the only football fan here, but, you know. Oh. How's the family? Good? Yeah. Yeah. I was. I was Christy. Yeah. Christy Canyon just showed up, Patrick. You want to? Yeah. yeah I, I see that. Yeah. Give her a hello. Yeah. We're, we, she's Christy. muted, so I gotta, I've got to unmute her real quick. Just, uh, she's going to figure that out by hitting a button. Hit that button, unmute. honey. Unmute. Cute. Okay. There she is. Yeah. There she is. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I love you. Asia. So good to see you. I love you guys. Oh my God. I love you. I, I was like 433. I'm like, I got to go join Hyapatia's meeting. I love you. And oh. look at you, Howie. But you look fucking fabulous, Hyapatia. Oh, yeah. You're so sweet. So do you, really, darling. You, you just do not. really does. Wow. Unbelievable. I look exactly like we did in Crazed 1 and 2 in the early 90s. That was a fun time, wasn't it? <laughs> I'll never forget you hitting him over the head with that beer bottle. <laughs> oh, my God, the guy, I forget his name, but he looked like Donny Osmond. He's yeah, I can't remember the gentleman's name either, but that was, that was hilarious. And you had to do it three times. Of course, it was a breakaway bottle made of sugar, but... It was like, wow. It was just, <laughs> Christy, Christy, Ursula, your, your hair looks amazing, Christy. What the hell did you do, man? I'm real. You know what? During this lockdown, I just started to wash it and put it in a bun and let it go natural. I don't straighten it anymore. Wow, it looks yeah. great. Looks it, uh, really great. And I, I miss my, I'm looking at Hypatia, though, and I'm missing my long, straight hair. <laughs> Hypatia, yeah. can you believe after all these decades, Vivid sold out? Wow. Steve no longer owns it. Well, that's good. Really? Who did, who did he sell it to? Maybe they'll run it right now. Oh, <laughs> no, he was so good. It still is so good. Um, he licensed it out to Gamma, a company out of Canada, for a five-year licensing. So he gets tons of money for doing nothing. He's like, after five years, if I, I never what else is it, I'll be okay. You know, like, but no, he's a... Uh, He's just, you know, he, and then I think Wicked just sold out to them. It's such a different, because I still do Vivid Radio, Hypatia. It's such a different world. <coughs> oh, I tell you, Vivid was a different world from Caribbean films. There's nothing like getting the script when you're sitting in the makeup artist's chair the morning of your first day of the shoot. There's <laughs> okay. nothing like having the director come up to you, Paul Thomas, and say, I'm sorry. I was up doing cocaine and arguing with my wife all night. I will be back till later. Here's the script. Have fun. And then coming back at two in the afternoon and saying, I gave you the wrong script. We're going to have to start all over. I never had that. Oh, my God. Oh, See, yeah. That's why I quit. No way. I walked See, off the set and said, I'm never doing that again. Never. They knew with me, give her as little dialogue as possible. Her brain's like the size of a pea. She won't remember it. <laughs> well, you know, if they'd have given you the script, maybe, I don't know, a week, five, three days before the shoot, that would help. I mean, that's what professionals do. That's what Caribbean Films does. That's what, when I made my R-rated movies, they did. I mean, why can't we run the business like that? The Caribbean Films did. It can be done. You know what, though? I mean, they were, I think, out there. The VCA and Vivid. And other than that, we I think that Vivid was, you know, considered one of them. PT was an oddball, I have to say. Like when they PT, find when I was involved, in my humble opinion, and in, in his words, was a drug addict. And I'm I sorry, don't, I don't like to work with drug addicts. Right. No, it, you know what? When he used to leave Hypatia, I was like, whew, like my last eight movies he didn't even direct, and they were my favorite. I can because understand why. Brad Armstrong and his partner, and then um, Parfait. Uh, Richard Parfait was um, somebody's son. Parfait, what was his name, guys? Somebody, I'm, I, my It mind. was Ron Sullivan's yeah. son. It was, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh. He, not Parfait. Ron yeah. Parfait was unbelievable. So when PT wasn't there, I was fun. When they finally let him go in 2000 ish, I was like, Steve, what took you so long? Like, 
he wasn't in the game. I 100% agree with you, Hypatia. And I think years later, I said to Steve, why'd you keep him that long? I mean, he didn't really want to be there. He's like, Christy, if I put his name on a movie, it sold like hotcakes and it got every award out there. He said, I kept him because he sold. I don't believe that. I'm sorry, but there are very few people that buy a movie because of a guy who directed it. They buy the movie because of the girl they, that's in it that they want to see, usually the girl that's on the cover. And it's usually a vivid girl. Yeah, because it's <laughs> good it, it covers. It, it just took the time to book a whole day and get a professional shoot and do a good cover, because at least he knew that much. But the thing with Steve is he wasn't hands-on. He never visited the set. He didn't read the script. He didn't follow through. That's what I liked about Harry Money in Caribbean films. He was on the set. He followed through. You he know, knew the script I, before you ever I, got there. He knew what was going to happen. Steve once told me, Christy, you aren't going to believe this. I've never even seen, not just one of my vivid films, I've never seen any porn film in my life. He's like, I don't want to. He's like, and you guys are kind of my friends. Why, you know, I just, I don't want to be there. That's why, you know. And then Marcy came along, his sister, and she was like our den mom. And she was amazing. Like she was there. She, you know, dealt with all of us and the different egos on the, where the boys aren't, where, you know, who wasn't going to work till they had drinks and, bup, 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 you know, those were tough. I mean, those were crazy. Ernest Green, who was married to Nina Hartley in that late 90s era, when I did some of the Where the Boys Aren't He Directed, he said to Marcy after, I will never do a Vivid Girl movie again. They're nuts. <laughs> they are out <laughs> of their mind. <laughs> he was a smart man. <clears throat> I liked him. Back when we tried to start the, um, the uh, uh, union, Back when AIDS first hit the business and oh, we started the union, he was head of the men's side and I was head of the women's side. And we went to all these different companies and said, we would really like to work with condoms to show people that this is what we should do so that they don't get sick from AIDS. It's what the homosexual films are doing. This is what we would like to do. And Vivid was one of the first ones to say, absolutely not, no way. Anybody who's on board with that, I will blacklist. But we wore them in Vivid. Yeah, because so many people were adamant, but he really did not want vivid, to. Vivid and Wicked were the only two condom mandatory. So I don't know when that union thing was. That was back in the late 80s. Okay, well, by 92, we did start to wear them, and Steve did get some flack for it. And our fans would say, we don't like it. And I'd be like, I'm not going to die, though. And they'd be okay because they couldn't get it anywhere else. So that was our point way back in the late 80s. But nobody seemed to pay attention to science back then either. Yeah, at least they did get on board. And I remember it was Heather Hunter refused for the guy to wear a condom. She's like, I'm allergic. I don't want him. But he made, Steve made Heather Hunter sign like a four page, you know, like attorney draft saying if she catches anything, even the flu, she can't sue Vivid. <laughs> Bless her heart. A, a non-disclosure agreement. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's shift things up to Stephen Gold real quick. Stephen, how you doing? Hey, Patrick. I'm good. How are you? Great to have you on a couple weeks ago. You know, it was great to be on. I uh, I had to be on today. I've never met you, Hiapesha. I'm a, an admirer of you. And to tell you the truth, I, I also was a performer from 81 to 84 about. But as I'm listening to you, we had a lot of similar things going. I, too, uh, was method. I can drink a cup of coffee as good as anybody. I, I went to the actor's <laughs> studio and all that. And I was I had the 8 by 10s and paying too much. And I can make good money in this. And I'm making $50 as an extra on a soap in Brooklyn. I mean, it, it, I get it. I don't know why we didn't cross paths. But uh, I just, number one, I really appreciate it. And, like, Herschel said, you, I'll swear, fuck, you look unbelievable. You look Aww. fantastic. Bless your uh, very good. And and we're a bunch of old farts here. So uh, you look really, most of us. <laughs> yourself. Uh, <laughs> especially you. <laughs> I got one foot in the grave. I'm, I'm all right. I, I no, you and I do have a lot in common. I can see you got a guitar and, and some sound I got, stuff in the oh, back yeah, there. The, and the piano I just got last week, a little digital. What, what you got? I got a Roland XP80. 
I got a, I don't know what the hell it's called. I, I, I bought, a, I have to go over and look at it. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I forgot. It's, it's, believe me, it's there. It's, it's right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, look at all your guitars. Nice. You have a nice studio. Yeah. That, that one there, all those Euro Hour, that one was signed by all six of the Rolling Stones, wow. that black one, Keith and Nick, oh, and Nick Taylor. Um, whole nother story for another day. But I wanted to ask you a question. I had asked Patrick, I went in, I said, call me in. Um, you know, I have found in life and in our business that you, people that, uh, I, I put it very simply, we're a lot smarter than, than maybe some people, God bless them, would look at somebody on stage. We're not sitting around stooping 24 seven and this is the way you think. It's a nice thing to do, but it's not what life is. And you can see the depth from you. You can see the process and the cadence. And I, that's what I've appreciated about you because I have see, heard from you over the years what you've done proactively and i think that's great and so my question to you is when i was doing the business i literally had to do breathing i had to separate steve from sean i i could not face me there that's my own weakness i couldn't do it that's why i got out of the business after four years i couldn't things would get difficult mentally and physically i, I couldn't do it but I was wondering how that did that with you. Plus, I wanted to get into the mainstream. And the last thing I'm going to say on that is, by the time I left, I was making 4,500 a day. I'm on a set of firestorm with Eric, so he must have made bank. And and uh, and I'm and I with uh, uh, Rob, and I and I, uh, it was great money. And I'm going wow. So I'm bundling up a bunch of questions. Number one, the separation, and number two. The strength, intellectually, psychology for a woman, because you're right, it's not just a cover in the box. It's literally a woman. It's a whole, I can get out, I can, my, my kids loved what I did. They're, they brag on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, if I, it's if my daughter, it's not going to be the same way. And those questions are never really talked about in this show. So I'm curious to know, because you're, 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 rock, you're a rock star in my book, the way oh, you wow. rock. Well, bless so that's you, it. Part. Thank you yeah. for the good questions. I, I really appreciate that. And it's so cool that we have so much in common. We do. Theater background and all that. That is really awesome. Yeah, I had definitely had to separate. That's why I never really lived in California. I had 18 acres and I, um, <clears throat> on, in southern Indiana that was 17 miles from the closest gas station. I was in the middle of nowhere. When I left the business, I had horses, rabbits, dogs, cats, a whole menagerie of animals. I rode horses almost every day. I canned food. Like I said, I homeschooled my kids. <clears throat> so cool. that was the dichotomy. That was the other side of me. And of course, there was the part that loved to, to study the Native American thing and be with the Lost River Band of the Cherokees every weekend. But that was the more down to earth, real me. What I did in front of the camera, of course, was acting. That's what we all do in front of the camera. We act, you know. Um, and I, like you said, a lot of people don't get that. They think it's a lifestyle that I just love sex so much. What can I do so I can make, have sex and work? <laughs> oh, I know. I'll make movies, especially for a woman. Like you can't get enough sex without making movies. Come on. Let's think this through. <laughs> <You know? laughs> a six leather woman with three heads could get more sex than any. Of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. Exactly. Easy. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was difficult and it was, um, <clears throat> more and more frustrating because when I first got into the business, you know, I wrote the rival tales of Canterbury. I wrote the screenplay. Of course I didn't I write the screenplay. Jeffrey Chaucer wrote that, but to adapt that and I wrote let's get physical and body girls and high is sexy and um, all these other movies. And so I, and Harry Money was awesome. The very first movie I did, the young, like it hot, he had me involved in the editing. So I saw how they shut, they, splice things together and how they sent it back to the lab for color correction and all of that way Arn. back in 1983 so when now everything's digital i'm like oh so this is how you do it digitally how cool i can do this at home so i'm a kid in a candy store right now not only with the editing but with the daw digital audio workstation for the music that you're probably very familiar with 
So I, I'm really having the time of my life. But the actress that everybody thought was, you know, really into sex and all that, that wasn't who I was at all. My pituitary gland died in 1978. So I didn't make androgens to enable me to have any kind of a functioning libido in 83. Mm. I, yeah, I had all kinds of infertility problems and all kinds of issues. And I tried to keep that very private. I didn't, you know, I was embarrassed for one thing. And I was not properly diagnosed until rather recently. So it was something that I didn't really want to share with everybody. And now as I've learned more about it, I'm finding out that pan hypopituitarism is highly underdiagnosed. There's a lot of people that have it that don't even know it. <laughs> and your pituitary <laughs> can die in various degrees. So you could have just the front part of your pituitary gland die, and then it can slowly die even more and more over years, which is what happened to me. So that was very difficult for me to force myself to do sex because that was an act. That was not something I really <laughs> enjoyed. I mean, there were wonderful people that I was able to work with. I mean, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard, I mean, and, and Eric, who made it enjoyable. But it wasn't yes. as enjoyable as it should have been for a normal person. Because I, I didn't understand. make those hormones. I didn't produce yeah. those things that would allow me to be normal. So it, as time went on, it got more and more difficult. And as the business got less and less professional, it got less and less worth it. Exactly. Well, it's funny you say that. Look at the people you mentioned, Eric. I think you went to the. I think he was a, a, an actor at the Academy of, of New York. It was a, a, a sta an actor. Richard's got acting background. You gravitated to people with talent, and it, and it doesn't judge. God bless the people that weren't. But I was around the Coke freaks. Everybody else, also Ron, by the way, was five of the eleven movies I made. Ron Jerry's my dad or my sheriff or somebody, and I liked Ron. I did. I met him. I've been in his house in Queens. Met his dad, late father. Um, it's really, it's, it's funny that you said all that. I'm, I'm, I, last thing with you, uh, Hyapatia, is that it's funny you had said about uh, the party, what you have to do. It works with men too. I yeah. used to work on soaps and bit parts, but to go farther, it was who I blew and who I knew, and I could have gotten farther. And did you ever think in our business, in this world, I had control. I'll do the sex on my own time and get paid good money you're not going to tell me to blow somebody and then maybe you'll give me a part or maybe you won't in a legit movie. It's very <laughs> difficult. So It sounds like he took the words right out of my mouth. Not right. only am I in control, I get to choose who I work with. I get to write the script. I mean, there's no comparison. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, and and that's, I know that's, it's the same for guys even more now than it used to be. But it's always been that way for guys. Okay. All right. Well, we'll thank you. Off. Thanks so much for your time. We got a, we got a few more to get to before Thank we wrap you. up our hour. Not only do we have somebody from Australia here, we have somebody from Canada in the room. Tara, how are you doing today, Tara? I'm not too bad. Hi, hi, Apesha. Hi, sweetie. I'm a little nervous, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to know if you have any memories. Uh, you worked with the late John Doe in six movies. Do you have any memories of him? Oh, I sure do, darling. Um, he, it's very difficult to talk about because mm -hmm. he was a nice person. I respected him. I admired him. I saw him change over time, but it wasn't, <clears throat> I mean, I would be gone. Christy would know. I'd be gone for years on end. And then I'd come back to California for one reason or another and see people. And I'd like, that's John Doe. My gosh, he's changed. And um, shoot, I remember when he was married to Deidre Holland. And to see the person he was then compared to the person he was towards the end was quite a dichotomy. And I really was sad to see that happen. A lot of people might blame the industry, mm -hmm. but I think it's a choice whether you allow the industry to change you. And then it's really not the industry, because anything could change a person in a negative way, you know, um, any situation. But I have something to say on, on John Doe. I think that there are certain people that never should have gotten into the business. Another one was our other vivid sister, Savannah. 
her problems were long before she got in the business. And I think that John Doe had serious depression issues long before he got in the business because the men weren't treated poorly. They made a couple hundred dollars a day. They had fun. I mean, they weren't abused. I think certain people just mentally couldn't handle it. And who knows what his demons were? I don't know. I mean, look at, he was married to one of the, the most beautiful, vivid girls and, you know, had a decent life, I'm sure. But he could well, daughter. Yeah, I think what people don't take into account is that nobody commits suicide because of the job they had. Right. Bingo. It's a series of things. For example, um, let's go way back to the first one that I'm aware of was uh, Shauna Grant. And I did The Young Like It Hot with her. Like I said, I toured on the, on the road with all, the, at all these different gentlemen's clubs. I went to Minnesota. That's where she's from. She happened to be there. I met her family. I went to Farmington, Minnesota, and I met her family, and I talked to her mother, and I talked to, they treated her like shit, and they had treated her like shit all of her life. It wasn't because she made movies, it was because she came from a family that did not give her unconditional love and support. They were very strict, um, very, um, you had to conform, or you, you were not worthy of love, basically. And Savannah, if you remember, when she was 15, her parents kicked her out and she moved in with Greg Allman, who was yes. 50. I mean, you know, so I think that their issues yeah. started. Yeah. Like and her, and her father was never involved in her life. Her father yeah. was never around. I mean, they could, we come from a series of traumatic events when we get to the point of wanting to commit suicide. It's not just this last thing did it or right. this did it. It's the star that broke the camel's back. It's a series of events. So to blame it all on one thing like the industry is really taking a very complicated issue and breaking it down to something that is just too elemental, elementary to be real. I mean, it's just stupid. Um, and that's the thing. I think that people don't take into account. They want to blame the business because it's so easy to say, that's what did it right there. Or blame drugs. That's what did it. Well, why does somebody get into drugs to begin with? To right. self-medicate. Well, you're in right. pain. That's why you're self-medicating. And even like in our era, I mean, I know we all came into business as these kind of like lost little souls. Do you know? I mean, I know I did. And Ginger and I, who she's still my best friend, we talk about it. And Victoria Paris, like, not that anything was wrong. We were never abused in any way, shape, or form, but we were looking for that outside family. Well, I think we were all young. Nobody got into this business as a mature, no. well-seasoned adult. We all got into it as kids, basically. We were in our 20s, you know, and there isn't anybody who's in their 20s that's got it all figured out. I was barely 18, but it worked out. Luckily, you have the nice people like the Jim Sals and, you know, people that didn't take advantage. I, I mean, in my years, at least you started a year before me. I never felt taken advantage of. I had like Jim South was our, he was like a savior to me. I mean, I could have gotten one of these scumbags that are around now that just abuse these poor girls. I hear the stories on radio. We yeah. were only coddled, you know, we were coddled in our day. We were spoon fed. We never, and I don't remember ever doing anything I didn't want to do. Definitely. I put my foot down. I mean, I remember a scene with Rocco Sufredi where um, the basic fundamentals of the scene, I never did an anal scene. I never did any of these strange gangbang things that everybody does nowadays. But the scene <laughs> was a little bit <laughs> I did a rough. Game. It was a little rough. And I don't like rough sex. Right. I want to be made love to, not abused. So I said, I'm sorry, stop, cut. And I got up. And mm -hmm. he, he said, what's the matter? I said, I'm done. That guy's never touching me again. I don't care what happens. Wow. I'm done. Over. So he rewrote the script. I will give him that. I will give him credit for that. He rewrote it so that um, Randy Spears came into the room and said, what are you doing with my wife? And that was the end of it. Thank you. Because I, I just don't get the stuff they, they do nowadays. Hey, let's switch gears. Uh, uh, Casey has been waiting with his hand up virtually for an hour. <laughs> He's got questions to ask, and we gotta we gotta have a couple more on before we let Hyapatia go. But time is is running uh, thin on us. So, uh, Casey, go ahead. Thank you. I appreciate it, Patrick. And hi, Patia. I have really enjoyed this hour. I am such a huge fan of your YouTube channel. It there is so much warmth and wisdom on that channel, and um, 
and we're getting it tonight. And so thank you so much for being here. Um, the interesting thing for me is that with the YouTube channel, you've really created this own space for you that is, it's, it's a space that is fully yours. You have complete control over it. You say what you want, you, you've curated it. And so it's something that is purely you. And so my question is related back to Vivid when you, um, when you were director, you did two films for Vivid. Um, was that part of your original contract when you signed the contract with Vivid? And how much created Vivid as a director? Well, I was very disappointed, as I probably already said, <laughs> with Vivid. Um, <clears throat> I did not feel as though I was director and namesake only. I would get on the set and I would say, everybody, oh, okay. please be quiet. I'd like to run this scene, please. And nobody would listen to me. Bye, Jose. Oh, no. And um, <clears throat> some guy next to me would say, everybody be quiet. We'd like to run through this scene. The exact words I just said. And people all of a sudden magically listened as if they'd never heard these words before. And that was very frustrating. Oh, no. Yeah. But when I was on yeah. set with, with Caribbean films, I had a lot of control. And I, I was assistant director for mm -hmm. The Rival Tales of Canterbury. So as assistant director, and since mm -hmm. it was a big budget production, and I wrote it, and I thought it was really cool because it was a period piece, I wanted to make sure that the dialogue ran really smoothly and professionally and that it sounded genuine. So I wanted to rehearse a lot, yeah. the, the scenes. And everybody listened. I didn't have to have some man repeat it to me, repeat it for me. Everybody listened to me. So I know it can be done. Yeah. Well, was there any, was there ever any question of when you left Vivid was, so there was never any question of going to a different company or maybe even starting your own or did you, it was just, it was done. You were like, I, I really, I don't feel like I have the ability to be heard and make my, make my voice heard in this industry anymore. I was done. I was fed up with the business. Okay. I saw yeah. how it was going. I mean, I started when we shot on film. And when we mm -hmm. went to yes. video, the thing that all the producers said was, well, we're shooting on video. So you should give us a break with your charge. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm doing the same thing in front of the camera, whether your format is video, <laughs> digital, or 35 millimeter Panavision, what I'm doing in front of the camera is the same. Why should I give you less? Mm -hmm. Why should I charge you less? You're saving money mm -hmm. on, on not shooting on film and not sending it out to a lab. There's where you're saving money. Why are you trying to right. give me off? I'm not gonna give you a break. You're already getting your break there. And then it went to digital and it was again, well, we're digital now. You should set, you should give us less, let, charge us less. No, I'm sorry. I'm not brain dead. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense at all. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Love about you, Hyapatia. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. This is, and, this, and it's great because, yeah, this is, this is, I, I yeah. I, I love this. I, yeah, I love it because, and I get this from your YouTube channel. You are, you're a woman of conviction and principles. And I love that you've always been that way. And that thank makes you, you such so an much. individual. Thank so, you so much. Thank you so well, much for being here. And I'm really like looking forward to more of your talk. And then you get this, this, this uh, internet thing. You know, when we signed our, our contracts and we signed our life away with those contracts into perpetuity, God, I hate that word. And then mm. the internet came and now all my stuff's on there on the internet. And I believe you had asked earlier about my kids. It never was a big deal until the internet came out. And then all of their friends could find me on the internet and they could find me. And all of a sudden my second kid who is disabled, he has a severe problems with ADHD and um, other things. So he went off the deep end <laughs> and has never come back. <laughs> My oldest oh. was fine. He, he was fine with it because mm -hmm. he's very intellectual. He's very smart. And he hung out with uh, academics because he's got a PhD and taught at UC Berkeley for a while. But um, wow. the other kids did not do so well. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Thank you, Casey, Peter. thanks for the question. We want to shift things over to San Francisco, our buddy Charles is with us. Charles has never missed a show, even on a bus. I'm uh, looking forward to the little trophy. Oh, wait, Christy has something to say. No, I have to go. 
I have to go. Bye. Hi, Patience. Love you, honey. Thank Bye. you for stopping by. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. And hi, Patience. If you ever want to promote your YouTube on my radio show, let me know through Patrick. He'll give you my number. Okay. Cool. Christy, awesome. Christy, it was great to see you. You too. Thank you. I'll love see you, guys honey. Later. You take care. You look marvelous. Love you. I just love you, I Patience. I just wanted to say hi, and I love you, and you're fascinating. Love Bye, you, guys. Too. Bye, take care, darling. Bye, Christy. Bye. Hey, um, I want to start off with wishing Hyapatia a happy new year. Okay. And thank you so much for joining us. And I had no idea that you were so creative and so brilliant. And so, you know, I think the first adult movie I ever saw was the Ribald Tales of Canterbury. Awesome. Wow. Well, thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate did. that. And happy new year to you as well. I did send you a message. I don't know. Do you do signings through the mail? And if not, I'll answer. That. No, I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. I really That's don't okay. have a post office box or anything set up for that. I'm sorry. I understand. Not a problem. I just, but I want to thank you so much for joining us. And Patrick, the reason I come every week is because Patrick always has the best guests. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Very nice of Patrick to have me. I'm, I'm so glad you joined us. You're such an interesting, fascinating person. I am going to find your YouTube uh, cha your YouTube channel and watch, you know, some of your... Awesome. I look forward to that. Well, Thanks, thank Carl. you. Thank you very uh, much. Aaron from Florida is with us. Aaron, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. First of all, I just got to say that I'm quite enamored right now that Haya Pesh is on with us because she is one of my all-time favorites. There's no way I'm going to lie about that. I didn't know if I was going to be so red faced blush through all of this that I was going to look like I was sick or something. So I'm glad it didn't happen that way. Um, it's kind of ironic because three people were in the same film together that are on here. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Red Garter, Richard Pachenko, and I also believe Herschel Savage. And it was also the first film that I saw with Rick, that Richard was in. Um, but Hyapatia, first of all, I want to say I've seen a lot of your films. I loved the films where you were doing a lot of your own dancing. And I wanted to ask if that was all of your creativity or if that was put in with the uh, director. And then the other question that I have, because I really want to know this, you're in the XRCO and the AVN Hall of Fame, and I wanted to know which one of those is, to you, is rightfully more of a, of a Hall of Fame. So I, I just had those two questions. Wow. <clears throat> That's a, I appreciate that. <clears throat> uh, I can't really say that there's a hierarchy of the two. Anytime somebody puts me in a Hall of Fame, I am highly honored. I don't care who it is, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I just think they're both marvelous for remembering me, and thank you very much, you know. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember your other questions. Oh, about your about dancing. Your dancing, yeah. Um, are you speaking of in uh, Let's Get Physical? Oh, you were, oh, my God, you were outstanding in Let's Get Physical. In fact, one of my favorite um I'll say it, lesbian scenes of all time is the one with you and Shayna there on the dance floor. And, um, you know, Paul Thomas is looking all bug-eyed, not believing what he's seeing. But, of course, just like every other fan of yours, we couldn't believe what we were seeing either. So we kind of also <laughs> felt like we were in the film. That's so sweet. Yeah, I wrote that film. And I wrote, when I first wrote it, I took it to Harry Money. I said, I wrote a movie. He goes, what's it about? I said, ballet. He goes, ballet. Nobody wants to watch ballet. Tell you what, we'll do your ballet movie if you'll write Body Girls. I said, Body Girls, what's it about? He goes, I don't know. You haven't written it yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds like it's about bodybuilders. He goes, fine by me. So I wrote Body Girls. And we, the way Caribbean worked is that we shot two movies per year, and we shot them back to back. So I flew out from Indiana to California, and we'd shoot our movies. Now, I wanted to do a movie about ballet because I always wanted to be a ballet dancer. I love ballet. I still have toe shoes to this day. <laughs> I still do oh, my, my ballet exercises. So um, that was my fantasy. <laughs> it was a self-fulfilling fantasy. And um, on the set, um, Paul Thomas said, you know, I play the piano. I could write a little song. 
and I could sing to it just a little, you know, one minute, maybe a minute and a half. And if you wanted, you could dance to it. We could kind of put it in there as like a fantasy scene. What do you think? And I went, oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yes, please, please do. You have sung to my heart, you know. So he did. And he wrote that little song right there on the set. And I choreographed the, the thing to it after listening to it a few times. And there we went. The opening se sequence with the pot de beret, pot de beret, that was in the script. You know, because that's just basic dance class stuff. I'm registered with the DEA, Dance Educators of America, um, it's certified in ballet. <laughs> it's a three hour uh, certification process with written, verbal, and physical things. I missed one question. He said, do a um, promenade. And I said, oh, hey, <laughs> is it a promenade? And I went, mm. don't know that one. <laughs> so I missed that one. But everything else I got, glissage, jeté, assemblé, um, grand jeté, got all those. So I wanted to show off the, the dancing, you know, and that's why I did that movie. And then when Paul Thomas came up with that song, I'm like, oh, my God, you read my mind. This is perfect. And back then, Paul Thomas, I don't know if he was on drugs or not, but he sure didn't act like it. He was a lot more together, in my humble opinion, at least he seemed to be that way he appeared to be that way to me at that time as opposed to when he was directing movies with vivid <laughs> but thanks you for that question that was a lot of fun i love dancing hey we've got uh i don't know the person's name but his his name is zoom user on this i he didn't set a name um, yeah sorry sorry about that pat i'm uh, this is lloyd hey hi patient how are you hi i'm good thank you how are you hi. lloyd Oh, great, great. Hey, I just want to tell you, thank you for the, um, the wisdom that you give us on the YouTube channel. Uh, loved your Native Strength series. Mm -hmm. And I'm also uh, uh, enrolled in your, uh, you, was it Yulu or the college course uh, online? Oh, yeah, the um, Udemy. Yes. Thank and you. I wanted to thank you. Yeah, that was great, too. And nobody seemed to mention that today. And I wanted to let you know that I thought that was very... Um, useful i'd just like to do another one if i could well thank you so much I yeah you're welcome that. that's so nice of you to mention i had kind of forgotten about the udemy courses well, yeah uh, thank you for taking it well you're welcome and uh you know the medicine wheel is very interesting and i'd like to learn more about that so uh thank you for doing that and thank you again for uh you sent me a copy of your cd and uh 13 and the little uh little dancing mouse are little fantastic jumping mouse. Yeah, yeah that's my favorite mouse. medicine story, Little Jumping Mouse. Yeah. Yeah, so hey, thanks a lot, Lloyd, for, for stopping by. Last last question of the night goes to Buck out of Pennsylvania. Buck, how you doing? Hey, hi, Patia. Hi there. We actually follow each other on Twitter. My favorite part oh. of your Twitter is whenever you do show the deer in your backyard, I actually find that very relaxing. Thank you. I've got a couple of deer videos on my YouTube channel. Oh, okay, we'll have to check that out then. But whenever you put it on Twitter, I'm always like, I watch it two or three times, like it calm, it chills me out there. The YouTube I do on my little phone, the um, good quality camera, my 4K Sony. That's what I use when I put it on the YouTube. Gotcha. So we actually did a signing a few years ago, and I do appreciate that. Um, and then, and I would love to, and whenever you're up to it, do another one. I again, I have a guy that wants to print up pictures from the Joker movie. Um, oh, I don't know if cool. it, but Haya Pesha was actually in the Academy Award winning movie, The Joker. She's actually at the end of the movie. She has no speaking parts. There's a huge billboard of her. And it is the most amazing thing because I remember watching the movie and I go, oh, my God, if that's Haya Pesha Lee. And all I could think about was that. And it took me away from watching the rest of the, like, being able to control the movie because I was too busy about looking at the billboard in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless your heart. That is so cool. My friend, um, Carlos Borloff, he hosts the Monster Madhouse um, a, a show in uh, D.C. He sent me a picture of that. He says, you're in the Joker movie. I said, no, nah, you're kidding me. He goes, no, seriously. <laughs> seriously. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I was so honored and blown away. Absolutely amazing. Well, hey, appreciate that, Buck. And and one more question quick, Steve. has been waiting all night. He got here early. And, you uh, got it. There it is. Brought it up. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> Steve, how are you doing tonight? 
I'm doing good, Patrick. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, uh, everybody's, you know, like Casey's already mentioned your YouTube uh, channel, which I enjoy as well, the Native Strength uh, series that you've been doing. Um, but what I'd like to know is of the stories or the movies that you wrote, which one was your favorite, if you have one? That's a good question. I, I have to say The Rival Tales of Canterbury, but of course I did not like this, the story. I just right. adapted Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. And that's got to be my favorite simply because of the production value of it, you know, the period piece and all the time we spent making it. But mm -hmm. as far as original stories, I have to say it was Let's Get Physical because I just, I love dancing. And it seemed like it made sense if a dancer Paul Thomas's character had had a tragic car accident and became crippled and could no longer dance, then he would also have ED. So let's solve that problem. Let's help this poor husband, he was my husband in the movie, with his ED issues. Yeah. Seemed logical at the time. <laughs> okay, thanks. And that's where I learned about the most wonderful thing in the world stock footage. <laughs> <laughs> because we had to buy stock footage for the car crash. And I remembered that. So if you watch my native strength shows, you see I use that fuck out of stock footage. Nice, nice. Excellent. Well, I promised Hyapatia Lee when we started the conversation on this a couple months ago, I said, you are going to be among friends. And I, I think am. a mission accomplished, right? Absolutely. Bless your heart. I love each and every one of you. You have all been so kind and so supportive. I can't can't thank you enough. I'm going to miss you guys. <laughs> I'll um, I'll make sure she gets a copy of this. And also next week, don't forget, we'd like a big turnout for Ember Snow. So she is uh, next Sunday night as well on here. So again, appreciate everyone for stopping by and appreciate Haya Patient Lee for being our guest. And I appreciate you for having me. Thank you very much, Patrick. And thank you to everyone who came and, and saw me and talked to me and asked questions. Oh my God, it's so good to see all my friends again and make new friends. This has been marvelous. I'm serious. Love you all.